LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers stink up the joint last night. Along with hearing what Greg Popovich had to say about LeVar Ball last night, I felt compelled to include NBA banter on my talk on my radio show leading into week two of NFL playoff weekend. First things first, the Cleveland Cavaliers looked horrible last night. They got their butts whipped. It was a butt whipping. And it's the second game in a row. They've got waxed. Minnesota destroyed them. And then after that, Toronto destroyed them. They've been down by 30 and 35 points in these games, for crying out loud. And, and then you listen, I'm not going to belabor the issue with J.R. Smith. All I'm going to tell you is this. He's a starting shooting guard that went scoreless in consecutive games against Jimmy Butler and DeMar DeRozan. Scoreless, 0 for 7 against Minnesota, 0 for 5 against Toronto. Played 27 and 25 minutes respectively. I'm not saying you got to be a gangbuster, but my Lord, scoreless at the shooting guard spot? Really? Really? Wanted to start. In fairness to J.R. Smith, he deserved to start. After getting to the finals last year, improving as a, the best of the perimeter defender on the Cleveland Cavaliers, one could argue that he should have come off the bench once a three-time champion arrives. But why upset the apple cart? Especially when you got a class individual like Dwayne Wade that doesn't mind coming off the bench and doing what it takes to facilitate winning. Maybe you should have left J.R. Smith in the starting lineup to begin with because it would have been something more difficult for him to handle being on the bench than it would have been for an experienced champion like Dwayne Wade. Nevertheless, that's not Cleveland's problem. Kyrie being gone is not just Cleveland's problem. Isaiah Thomas being back and clearly rusty and obviously a defensive liability due to his miniature stature is not the problem. Biggest problem the Cleveland Cavaliers have is that they can't stop anybody. Their defense is horrid. 22nd overall, 25 and two-point shots, 22nd against the three-point sh shooters. They're dead last in defensive def efficiency since Christmas. They look bad. There's no way around it. And somehow, some way, Tyron Lue's going to have to get it together and get them on the right page because this does not look good at all. You can't listen. Any hope that you thought you had of Cleveland beating Golden State is rapidly evaporating before I've ever eyes. Because say what you want about Golden State, but not only can they amp it up offensively at a moment's notice and literally blow you out of the state. Defensively, they hunker down. They buckle up. And they strap everybody down with them. This is an elite defensive team. By the way, Kevin Durant plays defense, in case y'all didn't notice. And I think the time has arrived for us to at least contemplate the notion Cleveland might not come out of the East. When you got all of these bodies that you've got to play, and you've got all of these individuals that need to make sacrifices, Tyron Lue pulls this off. He's cemented and solidified himself as a good young coach in this game. I think he can coach. I got a lot of faith in Tyron Lue. But this is a new kind of challenge. You got so many guys that you gotta you you you've gotta massage. It's gonna be tough. It's a tough spot for him to be in. I'm here to tell you. It's not easy. And that much needs to be said. 888 say ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. They've lost six of their last eight, seven of their last ten. They've given up a hundred points or more in 30 of the 41 games they've played. They ain't playing no damn defense, and that's about effort and want to. They are getting waxed. They're getting punked. And so far, they ain't doing much about it. Somebody needed to say it. I'm saying it. And by the way, my rant about the Washington Wizards yesterday, it's not because I don't believe in the Washington Wizards. It's because I do. And I'm tired of them disappointing me. I think Bradley Beal and John Wall are all-star caliber players. Together, I think they could be an elite backcourt. But something's not right with those two. I'm talking about as a tandem. Something's not right. They're not in sync. You know, maybe the way Isaiah and Joe Dumas and all of that stuff was, maybe that's a bit too lofty of a comparison to make. But I'm just saying to y'all, 
personality why something ain't right there. And that's why I brought it up. I believe in them. And I want to be in Chocolate City for the playoffs. And I got some serious questions about what I'm seeing. It's just that simple. 888-729-3776. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's the number to call up. The other story that I wanted to point to before we got back to the NFL. Greg Popovich spoke to the media last night. Um... And as the article reads, several prominent NBA coaches voiced support for Lakers head coach Luke Walton this week, but none spoke as forcefully against his chief antagonist, LaVar Ball, as Greg Popovich did on Thursday. Five-time championship coach for the San Antonio Spurs had this to say, quote, the first, I think the first thing to look at is the substance and gravitas of the source that speaks. Popovich said before the Spurs lost to the Lakers last night, and just stopping at that point would tell you you don't need to listen or go any further. It's just another fan in the peanut gallery with an opinion which is meaningless. That's what Popovich said. Popovich's dismissal of Ball, the article reads, came in response to a question about recent comments from the father of Lakers point guard Lonzo Ball that Walton had lost support of the Los Angeles Lakers. Even if that were true, the second-year Lakers coach certainly has the support of Popovich, the dean of NBA coaches. In his 22nd season at the helm for the Spurs, Popovich pointed to Walton's pedigree as the son of Hall of Famer Bill Walton. Quote, Luke has been schooled in this game since he was a little kid. He doesn't even know what he knows, probably, just by osmosis. Whether it was living at home or in school, as a player, he's had tremendous experience. As a player, he wasn't the best athlete in the world. But those are the guys that sometimes understand the game better. It comes a little tougher. They understand what wins and loses, what they have to do to get an advantage, and really understand the game, which he does. He added that Walton inherently understands the game of basketball. Right? Popovich goes on to say Walton is way more re than ready to handle this situation. It's a situation that's going to take some time. It's a process, and it certainly doesn't need any further, any outside chatter from people who don't have a clue and haven't gotten over themselves. I don't disagree with a word Greg Popovich said. He's absolutely right. I think Luke Walton deserves the benefit of the doubt. I'm a fan of Luke Walton's. And I love his father, who I used to work with right here at ESPN. Bill Walton's a good man, as kind and as gentle as they come. And by the way, he's one of the greatest big men ever played the game of basketball, won the championship in Portland, won another championship with the Boston Celtics. And if it hadn't been for his perpetual foot injuries, would have easily gone down. He's one of the top three centers in the history of basketball. And the man knows the game. And it's quite candid at, in terms of how he speaks. So if he's candid with us, you know he's candid with his son. And Luke Walton is somebody that I've got a lot of faith in. And I like what I see from the young, talented Lakers squad. They just need three-point shooting, which Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka have to get. And by the way, speaking of Magic Johnson, when I was joking about Kevin Durant yesterday, but talking about how Kevin Durant as a talent was better than Magic Johnson, he wasn't the leader and the champion that Magic Johnson was. But if he ultimately became a champion like that, from a skill perspective, Magic wasn't on his level. My man Snoop Dogg actually got at me on Twitter. And then he and I spoke and laughed about it last night. It's my brother. I love him. But he had to get at me because I dared say something about Urban Magic Johnson, who I love too. But getting back to Popovich and LeVar Ball, Popovich is right in what he says. He's absolutely correct. And it's wrong for LeVar Ball to take the actions that he took, which I've openly concurred. But I will say this. I wish I had heard as much noise when David Fisdale got fired from Memphis. Would have been nice. I wish there would have been more introspection in defense of Earl uh, coach in Phoenix that lost his job. That would have been nice. Don't get me started on how I feel about Mark Jackson and how quiet the coaches throughout the league were when he put the wheels in motion and, and Golden State decided to go in a different direction. But in fairness to all of those guys, that's not the same as a father speaking out against an organization he's not a part of. But I just thought it would be nice to point those things out. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. 
our resident handicapper out of Las Vegas, the one and only R.J. Bell. He's up next live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio.